Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and I have a treat for you today. Now last week I put out the 10 challenges for the Flat Earth by Professor Dave Explains. And I even gave them a simplified version of it because Dave seemed to have confused them a little bit. Well, miracle of miracles has occurred and a Flat Earth scholar has responded. So let's cue up the music and have a look. Well, here's a hearty soul that wanted to throw his hat into the ring and respond to Professor Dave. Uh, I looked at this earlier today, and it's really quite hilarious. It's an hour and a half long video, so I'm going to do it in sections. But I thought we'd just jump right into it and see what this young man has to say. Now, just a little background on this. Professor Dave Explains is a gentleman out in California that was a college professor. Now he's pretty much a full-time YouTuber. But as you can see, he's got quite an extensive playlist on a variety of subjects down here. And in a little backwater afterthought, down here at the bottom, he's got debates and debunkings. And here he's got his Flat Earth videos and Young Earth Creationist videos, and he's only got five of them. Hey everyone, so it's been almost exactly one year since I published my innocuous little Flat Earth debunk as part of my astronomy series. That was the one that the Globe Busters foolishly engaged with, and their idiotic insult-filled commentary prompted me to make this little gem that they never recovered from. Then, based on the ridiculous comments I received on that video, I made one more to mock the moronic things that all Flat Earthers say verbatim. Or at least they did, until that video made the rounds. And then I put the whole thing down for a while. It was never my intention to make that kind of content, but it was quite satisfying, and I got ten times the views of my normal content, which was a plus. Hmm. Could it have anything to do with the tampered with, molested algorithms of... YouTube search engine? According to Google Trends, there was very little interest in Flat Earth prior to Eric Dubé putting his nonsense out in 2014. Then it had a rise in popularity as the latest conspiracy theory peaking in about November of 2017. And then it had a steady downfall until the movie Beyond the Curve came out in March of 2019. Now that caused a little spike right here. And then the downward trend continued until there was an accident with a supposed flat earther trying to launch himself into space with a steam-powered rocket. And then there was another little spike down here. So while, yes, YouTube did stop recommending flat earth videos to people that didn't specifically search for them probably six months ago, that is not responsible for the lack of interest in the flat earth. The fact that it's a silly theory and rather boring is responsible for the lack of interest in the flat earth. But I had to move on. Lest I be tempted to rebrand myself from a channel with academic intentions to one devoted purely to debunking con men. I would challenge you to do something more than just what is merely academic. We are doing something that is a discovery process. It's an actual exploration of reality it is asking the questions that may not be popular to ask the the truth community with respect to the shape of the earth are non-threatening we are asking questions about why things don't make sense myth number one is that the flat earth movement is not a movement at all but actually it is a movement and it's also a conspiracy theory we hear that it's just a scientific exploration, right, a theory. Several scientifically minded people working on a project. But that's really not what's happening. There is actually an us against them mentality, meaning us, the scientific community, and them, the flat earthers. And this is referred to as essentially the difference between good and evil. So it's really not simply a promotion of scientific thinking. The flat earth movement is rather an expansion of ideology. And if you're trying to expand an ideology, you're part of a movement. Now, at the same time as being a movement, it's also a conspiracy theory. It's rare to find a flat earther who also doesn't believe in several other conspiracy theories. So when somebody is a flat earther, if you talk to somebody like that, most of the time you're going to find they subscribe to a lot of other conspiracy theories, some of which kind of go along with the flat earth conspiracy theory. A key part of it is this idea that the government is hiding information 
that would show the Earth is flat. Now, myth number two is that flat earthers are simply skeptical, right? These are just individuals who are high in skepticism. Well, scientists are simply skeptical, right? Flat earthers need to believe the Earth is flat. They're part of a community. Skeptics are always looking to prove and disprove theories, and they're open to evidence that would serve to prove or disprove the theories. Flat earthers ignore evidence that would serve to disprove the theory and accept evidence that supports their theories. Essentially, a more extreme manifestation of confirmation bias. Now, Dr. Grande did an excellent presentation on the seven myths of the flat earth, and I'd highly recommend that you watch it. He's also looked at the psychology of conspiracy theories and the flat earth movement as well. So I'll put a link to that playlist of his in the description of this video because it's very informative. But the important point is this, as we see with UAP, they're just claiming that all they are is skeptics looking for the unknown truth. Of course they believe that the spherical earth doesn't represent that truth because they're flat earthers. That's their movement. That is their cause. And as Dr. Grande points out, flat earthers refuse to accept or honor evidence to the contrary of their flat earth belief. They have a need to believe in the flat earth. That is a recurrent theme throughout this presentation by UAP. They need to believe the earth is flat. They refuse to believe evidence that shows that it's not flat. They put up questionable evidence to show that it somehow is flat, but when you look at that evidence, it shows the curvature as would be expected. The other thing that's kind of interesting about it is they're not afraid to make up evidence out of whole cloth. And I'll be pointing this out as we go. So let's go ahead and continue. Why don't we have on Google Earth, for example, a photograph of the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station well, here's my question to you. Why is it essential that we do have a photograph on Google Earth, which is a satellite-based mapping service, on the spherical Earth of some buildings at the South Pole? We have ground-level pictures of those buildings at the South Pole. We have people that have worked in those buildings at the South Pole. What is special about seeing those buildings on Google Earth? Can you see every single building on the Earth with Google Earth? Are there areas that don't have good coverage? Yeah, I would say probably. Now, more importantly, you make mention of the fact that you're just seeking the truth. Well, the truth is, there's the Earth. It's spherical. We have pictures of it from space. We navigate over it using spherical geometry. We use sextants, which require spherical geometry. Do you have any idea what latitude and longitude are? Do you know why the equator is the longest great circle on the Earth? Do you know why the equator is a great circle around the sphere? Yet the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer are both shorter in length than the equator is, and they are located north and south of the equator. And we have two poles on the Earth. We have a North Pole and we have a South Pole. Everything works out that way. Yet you feel that by questioning the reality of this spherical planet that we live on, you're somehow seeking truth. Yet we show you evidence that the Earth is spherical, and you write it off as CGI. You write it off as, oh no, that's just refraction, or it's compression, or it's schema lensing. You don't accept evidence to the contrary of your flat Earth belief, because you have a need to believe in the flat Earth to make you special. That's all this is. It's your desire to feel special. And I will not be bullied or belittled for asking such of a question because I have never gotten a satisfactory answer. And telling me that the Earth is a globe and the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station is at the geographic South Pole, 90 degrees latitude south. Uh, yeah, I know. I knew that. I, I thought I knew, but I don't know because when I go and look for myself, <laughs> and I see something that isn't the way it's presented to me, I get a, an intellectual curiosity. Well, it's not intellectual curiosity when you can buy a ticket and go to the Emerson Scott Station at the South Pole. Nobody owes you a vacation down there. Nobody owes you 
the ability to prove or disprove your unfounded belief that the earth is flat. If you want to go down there, go down there. Buy a ticket. Get a job. Either way works. You can go down and see for yourself. You deliberately choose not to because you don't want to know the answer. And you conveniently refuse to accept any photographic evidence, any eyewitness accounts, any video evidence that this station even exists. That's very convenient. You won't go there yourself. You deny any evidence that it's there. You don't believe anybody who has been there. That's not seeking truth. That's denying reality. That's why we call flat earthers reality deniers. I get an intellectual curiosity about what is actually going on. And every time I search this out, I find out things that are telling me that things are not as they say. Things are not as you are told, as you have been taught. I know making a video that restates the Earth as a globe as if people have never heard that before, as if I hadn't believed that most of my life. I don't think it's a noble endeavor, and I think it's a waste of time. You know, in a way, it is a waste of time because those of us that actually understand the world are never going to convince people like you that deny the reality of our spherical Earth. The reason that we're out here making these videos is that there are other people watching these videos that may benefit from having the facts. Plus, it's kind of fun to poke you with a stick and demolish your silly beliefs for all of YouTube to see. You remaining few that are desperately clinging to this dying fad to derive some semblance of self-worth. It is definitely not fashionable. In fact, it is. Now, if something is true, though it may be taboo, what do you do? But you see, that's the problem. It's not true. It's provably not true. We've known it's not been true for some 2,500 years. We have pictures of the spherical Earth from space. We have satellites and manned spacecraft in orbit every day of the week taking pictures of the spherical Earth. We have a live video feed from the International Space Station of the Earth from orbit. Yet, the anti-intellectual, reality-denying flat Earth movement is an anti-science, anti-intellectual, anti-fact-based movement. And that actually is dangerous because without science, we do not have the advancements that we have made nor will make in the future. To discourage science and learning and respect for data is a bad trend and we're here to oppose it. That's what we do. What do you do? I know what I do. I get called names for it, but my intellectual honesty and my curiosity override that. No, your need to believe in a silly concept of flat earth overrides that. You do not have intellectual honesty when you disregard data and facts. You do not have intellectual honesty when you disregard actual photographs of the earth taken by living people. Do you look at Google Earth? Do you measure things on Google Earth? Do you fly on aircraft that fly in great circle routes across the spherical Earth? Do you use computers? These are all things that come from science. But when science disagrees with your belief, you just hand wave it off. That's not intellectual honesty. That's intellectual dishonesty. That's denying reality. That's denying facts, demonstrable facts. That's why flat earth is not science. It's not even a topic of a scientific discussion. It is the pet rock of the internet, embraced by people that didn't realize that the pet rock was a joke. And I really want to get down to the facts here. 10 challenges for flat earthers. 
These will be some basic things that anyone could do to test the validity of the flat earth hypothesis. These are so mind-numbingly obvious that the fact that you don't do them is an immediate indicator of your complete lack of intellectual integrity. Let's get started and you'll see what I mean. Well guys, that was the preface to this entire series. So we're gonna start off on Thursday in two days with show me a real flat earth map that I can measure distances on. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take a moment, hit that like and subscribe down there, maybe check out a couple of these playlists. Hit that bell icon and I'll see you again in two days. Take care my friends.